Hey, future respiratory therapists or current respiratory therapists or new grads or whatever you are watching this video, hopefully you learned something here answering another question. Now, remember when I answer these questions, I like to give shout outs and credit to the person asking the question. So you just don't think that I'm over here thinking up these questions on my own. These are real life questions. These videos come from you. So if you have a question and you want me to address it, send it to me. You can email it. Email is in the description. You can send it to me through my Instagram or you can just simply reply to this video with your question or concern or topic that you need clarification on and I'll do my best to break it down for you. Now, Muamuli1 from Saudi Arabia wants to know about ideal body weight, tidal volume, and initial vent settings. Okay, so I'm gonna do my best to answer that question. Now, now secondarily to that, I received an email from Kyle who's also currently a respiratory therapy student and he wanted to know the same thing. So I get two questions kind of about the same concept in understanding how to calculate ideal body weight and, and then going into tidal volume and other initial vent settings. Now, the easiest thing to tell you about this is that there's no shortcut, okay? Now, I will tell you there is a shortcut out there on calculating ideal body weight or estimating ideal body weight. I just don't know it because I just always do the formula. So um, you can probably ask around and and seek out from experienced respiratory therapists that know if you if if you start here and then take I think it's something like two kilos for every inch or something over if you know the formula put it down if you know the, the shortcut it's really not a shortcut it's just another formula it's just another way to do it okay so so I don't I just know the the the, the one formula to calculate ideal body weight and that's the one I use that's the one I teach okay so here we go we're gonna talk first about ideal body weight now, to understand ideal body weight, you need to know your patient's sex and you need to know their height. Everything is based off of that, okay? So, here's the two formulas. There's one for females and there's one for males. So, we're just going to go females here equals 105 plus 5 times the height minus 60. Okay, and for males, it's 106 plus 6 times the height minus 60. Okay, so those are your formulas for ideal body weight. Now, to calculate that, you have to know how tall your patient is. So if you say, let's just say we have a, let's just say we have a, a uh, let me see this. We're going to go with the female first, okay? So let's say we have a 5 foot 7 inch female, okay? then the first thing you got to do is turn this into inches. Now, once you realize that you're going to subtract 60 from this, then it kind of simplifies it because when you know 5 foot 7, the first thing we're going to do is turn this into inches. So 5 feet times 12, 12 inches and a foot. So 5 times 12 is 60, and then an additional 7 inches equals 67 inches. So we're going to take that number and put it up here. So 67 minus 60, this brings us to 105 plus 5 times 67 minus 60 is 7. Okay. Now, what I just said, once you realize that this part of the formula is basically multiplying 5 times however many inches over 60, then you realize or over five feet, then you realize you can really just say 105 plus five times the seven, okay? So that's kind of the, the only really trick I, I really do know when it comes to doing this formula. So I'm gonna erase this because I'm gonna need more room here, okay? So remember, we're five foot seven, so then we just do the formula. 105 plus five times seven is 35. 105 plus 35 is 140. Now remember, this is in pounds. Okay, that's not a hashtag, that's pounds, okay? So then, to get it in the kilograms, you need to do 140 divided by 2.2. So when we do that, I pull on my calculator here, we're going to get 140 divided by 2.2, and our answer is 63.6 kilograms is your ideal body weight in kilograms. Now, ideal body weight in pounds is 140. Both of these are important. You're going to use the 63.6 kilograms to calculate your initial vent setting. You're going to use your pounds to understand as a representation of your patient's 
anatomical dead space. Anatomical dead space is approximately, okay, 1 ml for every pound of ideal body weight. So if somebody has an ideal body weight of 140 pounds, then estimated they have approximately 140 mls of anatomical dead space. Okay, we all have it. We all have anatomical dead space. Okay, so that's why this number is important and where it comes into play as an estimation of anatomical dead space. This 63.6 .6 is the number that we're going to use to calculate this person's initial tidal volume range. Okay, so that's the female. All right, so let's do one more. Let's say we have a female that's five foot four inches. Okay, then we go 105 plus five, this is 64, five times seven is 60 plus four. So this is gonna be 64 here. So 64 minus 60 is four. So 105 plus five times four, or remember I told you you can just take this number over five foot and plug it in there, okay? And then what we have is 105 plus 20 equals 125. 125, 125 divided by 2.2 is 56.8, that's in kilograms, okay? That's important. That's how we do for females. So let's do one for males now, okay? So remember, males are slightly different, okay? So let's just go with a five foot four male. Remember, male is 106 plus six times height minus 60. So we're gonna do 106 plus six. This is 64, five foot four is 64 inches minus 60. Again, this four is what's gonna translate down there, okay? So now we have 106 plus 24 equals 130. 130, 130 divided by 2.2 .2 equals 59 kilograms, okay, 59 kilograms. Now, what we're going to do here is one more, all right, but I'm going to make it to show you why you can't always just plug that number in, okay, to that one area. So this is height minus 60. So let's say we have a six foot four male, okay? Well, you can't plug this four into there because this total height, six times 12 is 72, 72 plus four is 76. So when we write our formula out, this is gonna be 76 minus 60, okay? So this is 106 plus six, this is 16, okay? 106 plus 6 times 16 is 96. 96 plus 106 is, let's see, that's 196. So this will be, uh, well, holy crap. I can usually do this in my head, but I'm struggling with this one. So 106 plus 96 is 202. 202. 202 divided by 2.2 .2 is 91. So 202 divided by 2.2 .2 is 91.8 kilograms. Okay, so obviously you see the trend here. As, as individuals get taller, their ideal body weight, depending on sex, increases. So does their anatomical dead space. That should make sense, right? Okay, so here we go. So we have, let's just use the same one, okay? We have this six foot four male. We just said that his ideal body weight is 91.8 kilos, right? Okay, now some of your schoolings may allow you to round that up to 92. Some say keep it at 91.8, okay? So for simplistic sakes, I'm just going to round this up to 92 kilograms, okay? Approximately 92 kilograms. Now what I do is the first thing I do when I'm a, uh, calculating initial vent settings is the first thing I want to know is what does my tidal volume range need to be. So I'm going to take my ideal body weight and then I know the initial vent setting tidal volume range on for mechanical ventilation, not normal tidal volume for 
healthy, normal breathing people. That's five to eight mLs per kilo. That's not what we're calculating. We're calculating initial vent setting tidal volume range, which is six to eight kilos, six to eight mLs per kilo. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to calculate 92 times 6 and 92 times 8. So we do 92 times 6 equals 552. And we do 92 times 8 and we get 736 mLs. This is your initial tidal volume range. Okay, which means when you're choosing a volume mode of ventilation that you're initially going to put your patient in, your tidal volume should fall in this range for a six foot four male. 560, 710, 650, all of those, okay, are within the initial range for mechanical ventilation when you're talking initial settings, okay? This is for tidal volume. We're going to do one more for a female, okay? from the very very beginning so uh, five foot six female 105 plus five times six this is a five so we're just gonna plug this in right here okay so six is 105 plus 30 equals 135 135 is pounds 135 pounds divided by 2.2 .2 equals I got the sniffles this morning. 61.3 kilograms. Okay, now we're going to take this, multiply by 6 and 8 because that's our range. So 61.3 times 6 is 367. And 61.3 times 8 equals 490. We're going to choose for this young lady here a tidal volume in this range. So let's say we're going to put them in um, VC AC. Okay. Then our first ball, our first setting is going to be a tidal volume in this range. Okay. So let's just go with um, 400. This is MLs. So 400 falls in this range. Okay. So we can use 400. That's going to be our initial tidal volume. Now we've got to set a respiratory rate. Respiratory rate, initial range, is 10 to 16. Now, let's think about this. If we set this patient and we choose 10, then 10 times 400, respiratory rate of 10 times tidal volume of 400, is going to give us a minute ventilation of 4 liters. That's below a normal minute ventilation, right? So we probably want to choose a rate that's going to provide this person with a minute ventilation that's going to effectively, okay, remove CO2. All right, we don't want to put them on a vent and hypoventilate them. So if normal minute ventilation is 5 to 6, 5 to 7, depending on which text you're learning out of, okay, then if you put them on 10, your minute ventilation is going to be 4. That's not going to be enough. So let's choose a higher rate. If we choose 14, then our minute ventilation will be 5.6. Let's go with that. So we're going to choose 14 here, okay? Inside of this range, and we choose 14. Okay, now, you got to choose a flow. Flow setting for initial setting is 40 to 60 liters per minute, okay? If this patient has COPD or some obstructive lung disease, then you possibly may want to go higher, upper to 70, Okay, that'll shorten eye time and give you a longer E time, which will give them more time to exhale, reduce the chance for air trapping because they're, by nature of the obstructive lung disease, likely to do so. Okay, but for no obstructive lung disease, you can pick a flow here between 40 and 60. So let's just go 50. Okay, these are our normal ranges. Uh, we need to set a trigger. So the patient can initiate the vent, okay? This is a flow setting. You can start flow at 2 liters per minute. Or if you're going pressure, you can do negative 2 centimeters of water pressure. Those are typically good starting spots when you're talking about flow. And then, of course, you assess 
If it's too sensitive, you make it, you increase it, you make it harder to trigger. If it's not sensitive enough, then you decrease to make it easier for them to, to, um, to trigger the vent, okay? We need to set an FIO2. Always got to have an FIO2. Every vent mode has an FIO2. Why? Because we control the amount of oxygen this person is breathing. Okay, now, oxygen, FIO2 initial setting varies based off scenarios. Okay, so the, if you read out of Egan's, Egan says choose an FIO2 that meets their oxygen needs and then wean down appropriately, okay? Some mechanical ventilations, world of teaching more towards MBRC, say you start 40 to 60 percent unless it's an emergency situation where you would start at 100 percent. So if somebody comes in with an acute MI and they're setting up a vent, you're going to start at 100% and then wean down from there as tolerated. Somebody comes in like a near drowning or a CPR, uh, you know, a, a code in progress or something like that, you're not going to start them at 40%. You're going to go 100%. And when you have data that says you can cut back, then you cut back, you know, appropriately. If it's a COPD or that you're ventilating for... Um, acute ventilatory failure superimposed on chronic vent failure, and they live at a PaO2 of, let's say, 60 millimeters of mercury. And before you intubate them, they're satting 92% on a 30% or a 35% venting mass, then you can just go to that value because the 35% venting mass was meeting their oxygena oxygenation needs. So you can start them at 35%. That's why FIL2 is very specific to the scenario or to the patient, okay? But safe starting range, you can typically ball, shoot ballpark 40 to 60%, but then always adjust and make these, these, these uh, either increase or decrease based off of your, your pulse oximetry reading, okay? And then when we talk finally, we talk about PEEP. Typically five centimeters of water pressure is a good starting point unless you know more about your patient. If you're coming from a BiPAP and they were requiring 10 of EPAP to effectively oxygenate, then obviously you're going to start higher than that, okay? But traditionally, starting at a peep of five and then making adjustments after that is what we see. And some people don't even include peep in initial vent settings because once upon a time, we didn't put everybody on peep. Now everybody goes on peep initially, and so... PEEP kind of comes into the discussion as where do we start our PEEP, okay? And five, no other reason other than that's just typically what we do, which is why I say start there unless you have reasons to start higher and then make an adjustment based off of your patient's uh, chest film, based off your oxygenation status, um, all, all of you know those things, the things that say, hey, this person needs more PEEP, okay? So, so good starting point here. These are your good, this is your initial vent settings. Now, initial is the key word because after you get a blood gas, after you've, after you've initiated these initial vent settings, then you change what you need to. If, you're, if you're, 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 your volume loops, your, your, your pressure volume loop is showing that 400 is too much for this particular patient because you have a bird beak, then you turn it down. Okay, and you wean the tidal volume down to meet the needs of that specific patient. If your rate needs to go up, you can increase your rate. This is not saying this is how we mechanically ventilate everybody. This is a starting platform when setting up a vent initially for patients who need mechanical ventilation. Okay, hey, from the ideal body weight to the initial tidal volume to the initial vent settings. All together. I hope this makes sense. Please leave a comment. Please ask a question. If you haven't subscribed, please do so right now. Hit that button right there. No reason not to, okay? All you're going to do is get free videos almost daily that is hopefully going to help you learn and become a better respiratory therapist. Love to hear your feedback. Have a great day.